potent anti-inflammatory and analgesic. So it relieves pain and decreases inflammation. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of put the stove on low. I'll spoon out a little bit of the can of butter, about, about that much as a dose is worth for the night. And um, I'll put it into the pan and just let it melt down. CBDs seem to help my seizures. I'm not using it to, to get any psychological effects off of it. I'm just eating the butter raw with bread, so warmed up. And how often do you take, do you take that? Once a day, twice a day? At night, right before bed. I used to be on approximately 14 different prescriptions, and uh, I would still have up to 12 seizures a day. I used to, have to take two handfuls of pills, no more. While this 27-year-old epilepsy patient is relieved to be taking medical marijuana, she's considerably more anxious about showing her face and has requested we conceal her identity. Why do you not want to show your face? I am not comfortable showing my face because of all the discrimination that has already happened. She says both she and her husband have lost jobs when she spoke openly about her use of marijuana as a medicine. But. The fact of the matter is, somebody has to speak up or nobody will hear these stories. She chose to tell us her story in her artist's studio. Here, she creates much happier works than she did even a few years ago, when her self-portraits plainly showed the toll epilepsy had taken since she was diagnosed at 15. I've taken pretty much every anti-epileptic on the market, and some with a little bit more success than others. Some of the medicines I, w I was on had nothing to do with epilepsy, and the doctors put me on them to help me sleep or to help with my anxiety issues. The seizures were so bad I needed to be sedated heavily to sleep. The depression gets worse the more you're sedated. Despite the constant seizures and depression, she graduated high school and was accepted into a private women's college to study psychology and fine arts. The seizures were so intense by my early 20s that I I couldn't stay in class, and as the stress of exams would come closer, that would trigger seizures. She had to withdraw from college just a handful of credits short of graduation. The seizures were so bad and the medication so debilitating that getting a job wasn't even an option. She was bed-bound for years while the epilepsy ruled her life. My husband would have to call me, you know, 25 times a day from work just to make sure I was still breathing okay. Um, I could not shower by myself because if I slipped and fell, you know, it only takes a half inch to drown. So we were living on pins and needles with me having that many. That's when she decided to move to a state with a medical marijuana program. She had read stories about its potential to treat epilepsy and she wanted legal access to it. How did that impact your seizures? They started slowing down. I had to build it up in my system. and. It, it wasn't until I started ingesting it that they really stopped completely. The potential of the CBDs in marijuana to mitigate epileptic seizures is not new. Scientists who put together the 1982 U.S. Institute of Medicine report found substantial evidence from animal studies to indicate that cannabinoids are effective in blocking seizures and that there is strong support for further investigation into the utility of CBD in human epilepsy. The subsequent 1999 Institute of Medicine report was less enthusiastic, saying the solid scientific evidence still isn't there yet, and it was unlikely to be a fruitful area for drug research. Well, I'm not waiting for the FDA approval to come through. It is, I know how it affects my body, and that's one thing that I've learned through taking prescription drugs all these years. I have to know how this stuff is going to affect me, not what somebody else says it does for them. Not only has it completely stopped her seizures, but she says something in the plant works for her anxiety, depression, and insomnia, too. So she sees the scientifically undesirable cornucopia of substances in the plant as a benefit, not a detriment. The fact is it works. It works better than anything I've ever tried, any pill I've ever taken. The cannabinoids have multiple actions. It's not just for on pain or, in her case, maybe anti-epileptic action, but... For, for many people, they have a sedative and any anxiety effect and so forth. I'm a cancer doctor and I often suggest to my patients that they consider marijuana for their loss of appetite, nausea, pain, depression, and insomnia. It's one medicine they could use instead of five. 
Critics of medical marijuana are highly skeptical of claims it can treat just about everything. How is it possible that one plant has the potential to treat so many different ailments? Intriguing answers started appearing in the early 90s when researchers pinpointed receptors in the brain and the body that bind with the cannabinoids. Receptors can be described as locks on the surface of a cell, and when the correct key binds with the correct lock or receptor, it opens the door and delivers messages. Sometimes the message is that the body is feeling pain. Other times the message may be that there is an invader and the immune system must attack. Scientists located two receptors. Uh, cannabinoid receptors, one called the CB1 receptor, mainly in the brain, and the other is the CB2 receptor, which is mainly in cells of the immune system. The CB1 receptors are extremely abundant in the brain, but they're also found all over the body in the major organs, the heart, the liver, kidneys, and pancreas. After finding all these locks that accepted the cannabis key, researchers made the next big discovery. The human body makes its own cannabinoids, called endocannabinoids. We have this whole elaborate system where we have these receptors in our brain and in our immune system and these circulating chemicals that we produce ourselves that really are very, very similar to the chemicals in the marijuana plant. The only difference is that the endocannabinoids that we produce are in such small quantities and they're also rapidly degraded so that therefore we are not high all the time or you know we don't have that feeling of euphoria all the time. Dr. Whereas Prakash Nayagarkati is a professor of pathology and microbiology at the University of South Carolina. For the last decade he's been doing research on what's become known as the human endocannabinoid system. The precise functions of the endocannabinoid system is uh, it's still being uh, understood, actually. The discovery of the system, however, is already revealing clues that have bolstered the personal stories of relief. The areas of the brain that control nausea and vomiting, chronic pain, and epileptic seizures all have cannabinoid receptors. What do these things do? Well, um, in the brain and the nervous system, the cannabinoid system seems to uh, uh, exert kind of a, a dampening effect. It's kind of an internal, I think, like to think of it as a neurological shock absorber. And when they looked in other animals, they found these receptors were present in basically all animal species. So why do dogs and monkeys, for example, need to have cannabinoid receptors? They must be playing a very critical role in trying to uh, maintain some of the physiological functions. The whole development of the fact that there are cannabinoid receptors in endocannabinoids has really given drug companies and pharmaceutical investigators a lot of opportunity to try to manipulate uh, the body's own cannabinoid system. That's because now they can create synthetic drugs that target the receptors instead of taking chemicals from the plant. By avoiding the plant, they get around the controversies and complications of its Schedule One status. A search of the U.S. patent database reveals numerous large pharmaceutical companies have filed recent patents claiming their cannabinoid receptor drug has the potential to treat almost everything. Multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, rheumatoid arthritis, Tourette's, epilepsy, heart disease, obesity, various mental illnesses, and the holy grail of medicine, a cancer cure. We feel that these cannabinoids give us an opportunity to study their functions, you know, and see how we can exploit them, how we can manipulate these cannabinoids and the receptors to find cures for a large number of diseases currently in which there is particularly no cure. As an immunologist, Dr. Niagara Cotty and his researchers at the University of South Carolina are exploring the impact cannabinoids and the CB2 receptors have on the human immune system. Both U.S. reports on marijuana found the cannabinoids do suppress the immune system, and previously this was seen as a concern. But Dr. Niagara Cotty believes tamping down the immune system could be a good thing. There are a 